class, our teacher announced, today we are going to learn how to hip hop dance. Now, I was pretty excited. I love dancing, and this was a refreshing change of pace from the usual days of gym class where I have to duck and cover while praying that the tall girl with bad attitude won't take her frustrations out on me with a volleyball. <laughs> so I enthusiastically began dancing, and we were all having a blast. And that's when some girl in the back row fell over. We were learning how to dance. All of a sudden, our teacher is yelling, Girl down! Girl down! And people are huddled all around her while she cried. I started to laugh. And I know, I know, I'm cruel, and this was not a laughing matter. Except it was. <laughs> it so was. Before I knew it, the girl who fell over was laughing too. But while all this was going on, I started to think, why am I laughing right now? Am I a bad person? I decided to do a little research to figure it out. And guess what? The average adult laughs 17 times a day. But how much do we actually know about laughter? So today, let's define what laughter is and how it works. Then, we'll discuss why it is that we laugh. And finally, we'll discuss the health effects as we try to answer, is laughter really the best medicine? So, you might be wondering, what is laughter? Surprisingly enough, it's a bit more complex than you might initially assume. Many scientists have studied the biological origins of laughter. According to the May 2002 article in New Scientist, the, the frontal lobe in the brain is responsible for finding situations funny. The left side of the frontal lobe analyzes the words and structure of jokes, while the right side does the actual analysis required to get jokes. Finally, activity spreads to the motor areas of the brain which is what happens when the physical task of laughing occurs. So when I say that your mom is so stupid that she asked for a price check at the 99 cent store, <laughs> your brain just went through three levels of processing in order to get my joke. From an evolutionary perspective, the origins of human laughter can be traced back to our common ancestor, the ape. In August of 2009, researchers led by the University of Portsmouth in England tickled apes in order to figure out if our <laughs> laughter can be traced back to theirs. It turns out that yes, the sounds of human laughter are almost identical to those of apes. <laughs> Speaking of tickling and laughing, did you ever wonder why you can't tickle yourself? According to the October 2004 article entitled How Laughter Works, it is a common misconception that laughter caused by tickling is an automatic reflex. It turns out that in order for tickling to work, the brain needs tension and surprise, both of which are obviously missing when you tickle yourself. <laughs> According to a, De a December 2000 article in Psychology Today, laughter is infectious. The fact that laughter is contagious raises the intriguing possibility that humans possess an auditory laugh detector, a neural circuit in the brain that responds exclusively to laughter. This might explain why Tickle Me Elmo was such a big hit. The little red monster starts laughing, and you can't help but join in, whether you're five or 50. So now that we know what laughter is and how it works, it is important to discuss why we laugh. Surprisingly enough, it's not just humor that causes us to laugh. In fact, only 10 to 20% of laughter is actually triggered by humor. In the, uh, in the September 2007 article in the Wall Street Journal, entitled Laughter, The Big Mystery, and Why Do We Do It? The title actually really says it all. It discusses that laughter is not only triggered by humor. When a situation is funny, this could be the cause of our laughter, but it's not the only cause. It turns out that most people laugh because they want to send a message to the world that says they are willing to bond with others, they have a joyful disposition, and they can share the jokes that they have in their minds. Another reason for laughter is fear. In the October 2004 article entitled, You Gotta Laugh, it was revealed that people in positions of authority like doctors, tribal leaders, or the family patriarch use laughter as a means of controlling the emotional climate of the group. But by far, the most logical explanation for why we laugh is the fact that laughter is natural. In his 1999 MSNBC article, Laughter, The Big Mystery, Ph.D. Robert Provine explains that laughter is first seen in people ages three and a half to four months, long before we are able to speak. This proves that laughter is done by us simply because we can. 
It was also discovered that children ages five to six laugh the most out of any age group. This is probably because when we are at that age, we are extremely exuberant and naive. However, this causes us to laugh as much as we want to. At that age, laughing is carefree, and it can be done in abundance. In this way, we see that laughing is seen the most frequently in children, therefore we should learn from them. Unfortunately, PhD Sylvia Cardoso, in her article, in her opinion interview entitled, It's No Laughing Matter, the fact that children play video games more and more may make them laugh less and less. She states that the most common reason for children to laugh is because they are surrounded by other children that laugh. So when this stimulus is taken away, it is not likely that laughter is going to develop in these children's futures. However, for those that do laugh, they are not going to do it alone. Thanks to the invention of websites like Twitter and YouTube, comical moments in life are meant to be shared. In the January 2010 issue of Reason Magazine, Greg Beto finds that when Kanye West bum rushes Taylor Swift, or when Balloon Boy allegedly takes flight, these services project you into a vast virtual audience from the best seat in the house to enjoy the fun. Best of all, the show never ends, so you never have to LOL alone. In this way, we see that we laugh because we want to form a bond with others. We laugh because laughter unites us as one. So now that we understand why we laugh, let's discuss the health effects so that we know exactly how we are being affected when we laugh. It's clear that laughter has an immense impact on our lives. It can be done for basically any reason at all. But as we've seen, it's not just humor, it's not just fear, it can be basically anything. In the February 2002 issue of Current Health, it was found that a regular dose of laughter can both reduce pain and lower blood pressure, thus increasing circulation. It has also been found that just 10 minutes of boisterous laughter can be the equivalent of 10 minutes on an exercise bike. That's right, laughter can actually be a workout for the body. However, laughter's role in our lives is not merely to make us feel physically good. It has been proven to have an immense impact on our social well-being as well. In the September 2009 interview with the Los Angeles Times, TV journalist Linda Ellerby describes her battle with breast cancer as profoundly more bearable because of her daughter's ability to laugh about it with her. Ellerby says that the first time her daughter saw her bald due to chemotherapy, she said, you look just like a Buddha without the wisdom. <laughs> Through this comment, Ellerby realized that laughter is a coping mechanism synonymous with courage. And you might be surprised at what other effect laughter can have on our lives. Take the Big Apple Circus Clown Care Unit. It is exactly what it sounds like. Clowns perform at the bedside of hospitalized children in order to ease them from the stress of serious illness. These clowns will try anything. Mime, music, giggling, gags anything to get the patients to take their mind off of the pain. So we can see that laughter has an immense cultural impact. It has been applied to so many aspects of our lives. And also, laughter yoga, an exercise routine that combines unconditional laughter with yogic breathing, has spread to over 60 countries today. The philosophy of the program is that you don't actually need a funny situation in order to laugh. You can laugh for no other reason than the fact that you want to. So. On that fateful day of gym class, as I stood there laughing uncontrollably, I realized how little I knew about the laughter that was consuming me. I made it my mission to become informed, so that the next time an outbreak like this occurred, I'd be able to explain myself to my friends. But by far the most logical aspect of that day that I learned, beware of accident-prone girls pop in, lock in, and drop in to Black Eyed Peas songs. <laughs> Nothing short of hilarious will ever come of that. Thank <laughs> you.